Lagos, the city of aquatic splendor and center of excellence. It's not only Nigeria's commercial nerve center, it is also an example of infrastructure development and visionary leadership. Welcome to Inside Lagos, reaching you from the third mainland bridge, longest of the three bridges that connect the island to the mainland. It is about 11.8 kilometers long. Amadebe Ojak Salama Deni, you're welcome to the show. A section of Lagos Badagri Highway has been declared open for public use by Governor Babajide Sonwoli. To fill in the promise he made at the inception of his administration, he also made a stop to inspect the construction of the Agege Pen Cinema flyover, where he secured the contractor's commitment to deliver the project in July. Just a few weeks after the inauguration of Governor Babajide Sonwolu, he visited the ongoing construction of Lagos Badagri Highway to access the level of work on the project. He promised to mobilize the contractor handling the project back to site while also pledging to complete the stretch before end of December last year. Sad that um, it's taken us this long to get to where we are. But you know, as, as, as a new government, we have the responsibility to our people. We have an obligation to our people to ensure that commerce comes back to this corridor very, very quickly. There are lots of international markets that are around here. We've seen a lot of road failures already, right? And, and so, but we need to quickly bring respect and positive respect to our people that are on this corridor. So our commitment to them is, which is one of the things we promise that the contractors will be moving back to site. And it becomes something that we will all be monitoring. And we're expecting that if we're able to get the financing, it's something they're supposed to complete before the end of the year. It's something they're supposed to. So even if they don't, by early next year, they're supposed to complete it to Okokomaiko. From Mazamaza to Okokomaiko. We're supposed to com complete it. Then there's another one now from Okokomaiko to Agbara. Then from Agbara to the border town of, um, of uh, Padagri and, and all of it. Six months down the line, Mr. Sonwolu led members of the State Executive Council back to the same location to inspect the level of work. He is impressed that he has delivered the promise he made to the people six months ago. If you recall, in July, nobody could stand on where we're standing right now. We could not even access this part of the road at all. But we've been able to push it um way from maza maza towards alakija to agboju now we have passed trade fair and so we have kept faith with our promise and our contractors have also measured up to work what is outstanding as we stand here on this part is just for them to finish up the lane marking and to do the um, street lights um, and to clean up a section before mile two there's some demolition that has to happen before my two that busts into a papa or the express road which have assured us that once we have a meeting we can clean up that mr sonwolu also declared the commencement of construction work on the phase two of the projects which will take off from trade fair to the main gate of the lagos state university lasso in iba town we have about 4.7 kilometers from here to get to lasso gate which is the next phase of work from here, it's about 4.7 kilometers to get to Lasso Gate. They will pass Volkswagen, they will pass in front of um, the, the military barracks, they will pass Lasso Iba Junction, and they will finally get to Lasso Gate. That we're hoping from now, the contractor has assured us nine months, but we're going to push him to deliver within seven to eight months. Um, um, nine months is what he has assured us, but one, because we're in dry season now, 
for him to push all of the um, um, the heavy work around drainage, around ensuring that they keep the right of way, you know, safe, such that by um, later in the year, they should be able to get to in front of Lasso Gate. And the final one will be a two kilometer that will take us to Okokomaiko. That once we finish the last one, that should be very easy um, for them to, to get it finally onto Okokomaiko. He advised road using some residents of the area against activities that might damage the completed section urging them to take ownership of the road. This road, as we continue to open it, we realize that our citizens are not keeping it. These are taxpayers' money that we're using to build this major infrastructure. We realize that we still have tanker drivers and trailers that pour, you know, um, use engine oil onto the road. They, they make it disuse. They park their cars and their trucks permanently on the road. A lot of enforcement will continue to come. will continue to come back here and tow vehicles away because it's a 10-lane highway. It's a 10-lane highway, five lanes on either side and supposed to be free-flowing of traffic. You can see that it took us less than 10-15 minutes away from Orile to get to this place. That is the measure. And you can imagine how many kilometers we've had to go through to get here. So that's where we are right now. We're hoping, like I said, before the third, the end of the third quarter, they will have gotten to beyond Lasso Gate. The governor and his inspection team also made a stop at Agege to assess the ongoing construction of Agege Pen Cinema flyover. He secured the contractor's commitment to deliver the project in July. Mr. Sonwo only disclosed that the Agege Pen Cinema flyover will be completed with comprehensive rehabilitation work on inner roads to enhance traffic flow and improve quality of lives. At the completion of this um, major edifice, not only will we see a major, major traffic gridlock improvement, we'll also see real value, um, real real estate value coming back to the entire neighborhood here. And you could see better quality of life because this also forms part of sustainable development 11 and 9, as I've been told, to ensure that we continue to build smart environment, smart cities. These are one of the major outstanding flyovers happening right in the midst of Agege. And so what it speaks to is the fact that what is good for people on the island is also good for my people all around here. You can see road infrastructure you can see road infrastructure you can see bridge infrastructure all of the three coming to solve traffic to solve transportation to solve movement of human beings from one part to the other and you can see economics you know businesses also coming up to flourish here and we're hoping and that's why i come here to also inspect that we appreciate the contractor we will we, we'll also be able to drive a lot of commitment from them and let's use the, the, the dry season to see how we complete this bridge very, very quickly. With the 2020 budget now signed into law, residents of the state expect more infrastructure development in achieving the dream of a greater Lagos. Governor Babajide Sonwolu also said he will deliver the Osho Diabulia Babi RT corridor at the end of May 2020. The governor made this statement when he inspected the BRT corridor along the axis, telling residents within the area to desist from throwing dirt into the drainage. This whole drainage was distilled a um, couple of days ago and you can still see the amount you know, of, 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 of rubbish that are still left inside there. But more importantly is to solve the drainage around here. We have five bilateral stations which are stations that faces both sides, and we have nine um, median stations. Um, the median ones are the type that we entered in the first time. So we have nine of such, and we have five bilateral stations. As you can see, the entire project is around 70-75%. Where we are now is the only place where we have some level of failure regarding the drainage, um, so that we can complete um, the walk on on the road.
he said the 13.68 kilometers of roads is about 70 percent completion we're hoping that before the end of may and that's the other commitment we're bringing before the end of may we should complete the entire infrastructure along these roads be it all the bus shelters be it the rigid pavement on the road and be the drainage for the entire 13.68 kilometers and we're hoping that we'll start it with about 200 blt buses we'll start with minimum of about 200 blt buses that will be once we come and we see the scaling up um, the blt can move up to 300 or 350 buses based on um, the traffic that we see and based on the utilization implementation of the 2020 budget and how the ongoing projects will be completed in the state has been top discussions in lagos now negotiations wants answers to all these questions so i will be engaging the state commissioner for information and strategy benga omotosho now join me at uh, agege pens in my flight over venue of a meeting let's go there The signing of the Lagos State 2020 budget into law by Governor Babajide Sonwulu is no doubt an oil in the wheel of progress of his administration's themes agenda as he strives for sustainable development of the state. It is a day out with the State Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Benga Motosho. We are here at the Agege Pen Cinema Flyover to discuss how the fiscal instrument tagged budget of awakening will positively affect the people. The same project had attracted Governor Sonwulu's attention before now. The governor was able to secure the commitment of handlers of the project to deliver the long-awaited flyover for public use by the end of July. The commissioner told me that Mr. Governor's intervention in the Penn Cinema flyover, which has been under construction for over two years, is in line with his promise not to abandon any inherited project in the state. He outlined government's plan for improved infrastructure and effective traffic management in the state. The government is doing a lot about traffic management. Like you have observed, it's the first uh, pillar of the theme's agenda. What we are going to do and what we are doing is to deploy technology to manage the traffic in Lagos. We are going to be doing a lot of that. Most importantly, you can see that in most parts of the state now, traffic lights are working. We are going to deploy technology to, to, to ease traffic. And part of it is also the fixing of all the roads. If we fix the roads in Lagos, we cannot do everything at the same time. There are about 6,000 roads in Lagos. If we fix most of them, we believe that traffic will flow better. But the most important thing is that our people they need the orientation in this area too. Why drive against traffic? People still do it. You don't have to do events that are big without telling last man that you want to do an event that is big and people have to start parking on the road and then disturbing uh, traffic. It is not fair. So we have to consider our neighbors in everything that we do. If you are driving, you don't drive against the traffic. If you are having events, you inform a last man law enforcement agents to come there so that they 
uh, ensure that the, 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 there's a free flow of traffic. So all of this we are going to do to persuade our people not to do it again, even as we enforce the law. But I tell you every day, you have uh, a flood of Okada people coming into Lagos. You cannot arrest all of them at the same time. But the people we are arresting, I'm telling you, they are paying their life for it. They are losing their Okada, which they consider their means of livelihood, but which they are using to deface the city. And it's your day for you. He also told me about government's efforts to revamp in the education sector and tackling insecurity in Lagos. Education in the 2020 budget is uh, a mark for 48 billion naira. I know the governor and the deputy have been visiting some of these schools to see the state of uh, dilapidation. Yeah. What is this government will be kicking off I speak with in you. the education sector? As I speak with you, a committee has been set up to see how we can renovate public schools. Have they started working? They have started working. Contractors have been uh, choosing to go and do the work. And I, I think they have been mobilized to go and do the work. So by this time next year, the kind of uh, schools that you are seeing now, they'll be different from uh, the ones that you will see. The government's plan for the health sector and waste management was also not left out of the discussion. Let's talk about health now. I know 33 billion naira is earmarked for health in the 2020 budget. You can see that apart from uh, education and infrastructure, no other aspect of the budget is as big in terms of uh, figures as health. And that shows that the administration has health as top priority on top of its uh, agenda. And what is going to happen is that there is going to be massive overhaul of the primary health care system. And what I mean by overhaul is that, apart from the fact that the facilities are going to be fixed, where you have bad facilities, they will be upgraded, they will be fixed, so that more and more people can be encouraged to use the primary health care centers. So that if you have a day, you don't have to run to last week. The primary health care centers will be there to look after you. Recently, the governor mandated it for all cabinet members to visit at least two health care centers, two primary health care centers each, and then report back to the uh, cabinet on what you have seen. And honestly, I went to two health care centers. I was uh, impressed, but there are more things to be done. More mother and child hospitals are going to be built so that uh, child mortality rate will drop, maternal mortality rate will drop. So those are the plans uh, of the government in the health sector. And more and more uh, doctors are going to be employed and more people will be trained. Uh, yeah, the, the idea is that uh, our people the, so many health problems that we can solve at the primary health care centers, we should be able to resolve them. They are not taking them to the secondary health care centers. Yes, unless you are on a referral, you can't go to Lasso. And the primary health care centers are going to be fixed in a way that people will be feel comfortable and confident, confident when they go in there. There will be drugs there. The one I went to about... Uh, the one I went to about uh, a month ago myself, I was giving drugs and I paid peanuts for everything. I was cheated for my leader and I paid 1,900 naira. They didn't know. It was after that I had been uh, treated and I was leaving, I now introduced myself to them. 
And I asked them whether they attended to people the way they attended to me, and they said that was the custom there. So I believe that if they could treat me like that, and with more money this year, and better infrastructure, fully paid by government, who are more legal chance to get healthy. They will get healthier than they are here now. Benga Motor Show ended the discussion by telling Lagosians to expect more dividends of democracy from this government in the year 2020. Lagosians should look for more performance. Mr. Babaji De Son will lose him, man of his own wealth. He has promised Lagosians that when they call him, he will listen, and that he has been elected to serve, and he is going to serve and serve right. There are going to be very brand new projects. Or like, uh, say for example, the dream of the governor. His plan is that the blue line, the blue railway line, should be test run around this time next year. So that in the year 2021, the Goshans can begin to enjoy that. I am sure about six brand new boats are going to be delivered to the state government so that we can have more people using the waterways. And then we are going to step up advocacy to take more people off the road to go and use uh, water. We look forward to such businesses coming to Lagos by this new year. And uh, small, small businesses uh, growing too. In our Greek, the immortal rice mill is going to come on. And so many other projects that uh, we are working on. Two tons of rice per day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. In Agri, if you have uh, the uh, rice meat coming up, that means our local rice uh, farmers they have uh, somewhere to, to, to sell their their things. And of course, the Lagos State uh, Governor Mr. Bajire Sonwo is meeting with uh, the Lagos State Employment and Trust Fund people so that uh, to, to to strengthen the the, 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 the the fund so that more and more people can get money to start their own businesses because. The aim is that uh, the government cannot employ everybody. The private sector will have to do it, and people too will have to learn how to create businesses by themselves. So if you finish uh, roads, so many, as many roads as possible, you can resolve this, the problem of traffic. You can, uh, more businesses are going to come into town and more people will be employed. A lot is going to happen in year 2020, and we're sure. also looking forward to seeing sure. them. Um, thank you so much, the Commissioner so for much. Information and Strategy, Lagos State, Mr. Benga Motor Show. Thanks uh, for joining us on Inside Lagos. So and that does it on today's edition of Inside Lagos. Please join us on our social media platforms showing on your screen. Amadeo Salam Salamadeo. And from us, it's Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Lagosians.